And uh, I got this glass in the front, completely prepped, it's all clean, clean up all the seal around the edge. Mazda does a pretty cool thing where they have this foam seal around the edge, which really helps keep the, the glue in the actual like seal area instead of uh, you know instead of bleeding through the interior, so that's cool. I just want to show you guys these brand new windshield moldings I got. Pretty cool the way the Mazda packages these. Here's the front one. Go ahead and grab it out of here. Just have it like folded up on all these edges. Which so kind of goes into a circle. Exactly how these mount. I'm pretty sure they go around the corners and the top. We got those. And this goes along the top. And then this is the actual window seal. And everything's gonna fall, of course. So. Let me go ahead and get this on. Let me get the blue out. an expert when it comes to putting vinyl wrap on cars, but I think it looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Let me know. for the splitter and basically it just says to uh, it doesn't really give any specific information on where to drill the holes it just says drill the holes you know so let me use this basically these are welded on so I'll just hold it about middle way and didn't just I've scratched a uh, basically just scratched a witness mark into the paint in the bottom of the bumper and I'll use that as a location for where to drill my holes and you just need to drill a hole big enough for a terminal bolt to fit through now, once you get these 
season, obviously, you gotta do these two. And then once I'm actually to the point where I'm mounting the splitter, I'll just use these to make a little bit of a indent on top. I might just remove these actually. I might just pull this out entirely, mount it up, and then just stick a marker or a paint pen or something under here. Mark the spot in the splitter to drill. And you just drill the same holes in the splitter and bolt it on. Here you're right behind the sway bar. You got these two little holes. I forget what they used to do in the stock car, but now they're gonna use these two little support brackets. Alright, now the instructions didn't say anything about these, which is why I was really pretty confused about it. But I did some measurements, I found out that it seems like they need to mount on the outside of the frame, the frame row right here. And I found out that the uh, if you put it in this orientation, this hole lines up directly with the uh, coolant reservoir and the power and the, what's it called? windshield washing fluid reservoir so you can use that to start and then there's nothing on this side but it lines up perfectly in between this gap so I'm assuming they want you to drill a hole right here and put in a rib nut to put that in place and then once you actually have the splitter installed you would just drill holes in this and bolt it to the rails in the splitter uh, I ran into, an, uh, ran into an issue while trying to test fit stuff and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to either get a new get new mounts for my sway bar or modify these because this is like this is supposed to be the highest point of the splitter, right? Like this should mount to the base, and this is above the uh, sway bar, so this needs to go up at least like half an inch at the very minimum. I would prefer it to be more like an inch. Or more, whatever I can get. Luckily, it's not really interfering with anything else if I were to bring it up. So, I'm going to look into that, see what my options are. And if I have to order new sway bar mounts, that's just what I'm going to have to do. So, I'll get back to you once I've researched that. So, I look it up, and that's what I need to get. I can't really. Unfortunately, I'm not in Japan anymore, so I can't just drive down to Virginia Engineering Shop and pick these up. So instead, I had to go through a U.S. dealer, but luckily they didn't charge an arm and a leg over what I would have paid through Fujita Engineering directly. So those should be here, hopefully within a week or two, and then I can get back to this. But for now, I'm just going to finish everything else up. All right, so on second thought, I'd really like to get this done today. So I went ahead and just removed my sway bar entirely. Now I can't get in the way of anything. Once new parts show up, I just got to put that on. That won't be that hard, so... Alright, I got this thing jacked up, more or less in place. You look down, you can see between those on either side. Pretty much perfectly centered. It's got a nice little, uh, I don't know if they call it a line or whatever, but you know, the carbon fiber meets up right there, right in the middle, more or less. Put these things on. These are also not in the instructions I give you. They're pretty self explanatory. They just go on like this. There's three. Nuts are already put into these extendants and senders. And now, the biggest thing confusing me here is exactly what the placement of this is supposed to be. And I'm pretty sure it's just right here, right where it, right where it ends on this ridge here. Because underneath, you're supposed to put a bracket to support it to the bumper itself between the the splitter and the bumper. So I'm going to go ahead and install the bracket for this on both sides, and then hopefully find the holes for everything else to drill and get everything else mounted as well. All right, after some careful thinking, I decided I need to trim this back a little bit because it's hitting right here and it's not doing that in the same thing on the other side. So I'm not able to get this to line up properly. So let me pull this down for a minute, cut that off real quick, try again. That is much better. This side's actually able to fit up pretty much all the way over now. The other side's did a little bit of massaging on that side too, just in case. Make sure it fits a little bit better. So I just gotta drill a hole right there. Same thing on the other side, put this bracket on. Then once I have you know have that bolted on, I can have these two sides being held in place like exactly where they need to go. And then everything else can line up from there because I know it's 
you know, perfectly straight and even on the car body. All right, I got both sides officially mounted in at least one spot. Well, literally just one spot on each side. So now that it's completely aligned, because these are both even how I aligned it, I can go ahead and mark every other hole on the chassis that I need to make for the splitter, drill them out, and then hopefully everything lines up and I can just bolt it on. All right, I got most of my holes marked now for the white paint dots right there. And the way I did this, you're gonna love this. I took this Allen head key bolt, or Allen head, what do you call it? I took this Allen key, dipped it in some white paint, put it back behind the bumper into each hole until I found, you know, the hole. Dipped it in and just rubbed it around a little bit. And there's all the holes I need to drill, except for the outer two in this one. They're really hard to get into right here because this doesn't flex much and you can't really get your head in there. So I'm gonna drill these two out and then just basically use them as a template for where the other two need to go and just drill those later. And I think that'll work just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so I got the entire front end of the splitter drilled out and bolted on. And then I pulled the bumper off so that I can get those last two holes back here drilled. And now I got those bolted in as well. So this thing is completely bolted on now, all with the exception of these side plates. So now all I'm gonna do is just drill a hole right about here and here, match it up on both sides, and then put a bolt through. Cause these will really help with, uh, you know, rigidity of this thing. Cause obviously it's literally only being held on by some fiberglass and a couple of things right here right now. So I'd like that to be stronger than how it is. But other than that, yeah, that's completely finished. And my drill battery is dead. So I'm gonna do that later probably tomorrow because i got a trip this weekend but for now i'm gonna put the wheels back on and put it back on the ground So for anyone who's wondering why I never painted the hood, this is the original hood that came with my car. And it's not the worst hood ever. It's, I mean, it's kind of cheap. It's just a uh, fiberglass, just no name manufacturer hood. I've seen one other one of these in Japan while I was there, ever. It's just not really a popular hood anyone really goes with. I would have stuck with it, but whenever I hit the deer, you can see a little bit of damage right there. Cracked my vent. And then also, like, it always had these, like, really poorly done holes for the hood pins right here. I had it all covered up with, like, a fake sort of a bra wrap. And, yeah, basically, it's just, like, it's not really a hood, a hood in any condition that I want to go through the trouble of fixing. So, with that being said, this is my new hood. So this is a Saibon, Saibon, however you want to say it, carbon fiber hood. Uh, it's the, if I remember correctly, it's the ST version. It's whatever the copy of the Scoot hood they have is, which is a hood that I really like. I kind of, it took me a long time to decide that I liked this front vent, but 
I eventually came to terms with it. But yeah, this uh, obviously not a sponsored thing or anything. I paid full price for this, which is nice because it means I can talk a little bit of shit about it. Because overall, honestly, this is a really good hood. I really like it. The construction is is nice. Like I really like the construction. I know I need to clear coat over this at some point just to kind of make it uh, UV resistant. And I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it. I kind of want to paint it. I kind of want to do something else a little bit uh, more interesting with it. We'll see what happens. For now, I'm just going to leave it raw. Just let it show off a little while. It won't be too long, and it's mostly under a cover anyway. But yeah, the fitment on this hood wasn't the greatest. It's a little bit more of a gap at the back on this side, and then it comes pretty close up here, where it also kind of dips down. You can see it's like slightly at a different sort of elevation there and then like this gap is obviously far from perfect the front isn't too bad although it does sink in around the corners right here not the end of the world kind of the same thing going on right here but not quite as bad this gap is a lot better but still not perfect and then this gap is pretty much the same all the way to back here but I can't really do much about that because the hood, like I've tried everything I can. I've even drilled these holes out a little bit bigger and everything, try to force it over, but it just doesn't quite want to work. You can see I kind of messed up my paint right here. I'm gonna have to touch that up eventually. But other than that, like I said, it's, it's honestly really good construction in my opinion. The carbon pattern looks great. And if I pop my hood real quick, ignore my destroyed engine bay but you see the the underlay and everything is all it's like it looks really nice it's it's nice and uh aesthetically pleasing i suppose for like car shows and stuff but i did have to modify it a little bit i guess you could say because this little notch right here i had to cut out about like a half inch of material all through here to get this to clear because it was hitting it was hitting on these two pieces and because it was like the hole was too far forward so there wasn't enough clearance right here so I kind of had to port my hood latch a little bit and also you have to kind of drill this out a little bit to make the the hood uh, the hood prop stay in place but other than that yeah other than that it's pretty good like I said just a little bit of some flaws here and there but overall not a bad product for the price So, tragically, a lot of people that install this kit on their car tend to leave these canned end plates off. I really don't know why they decide to do it. It's probably just a cosmetic thing for them. Personally, though, I really like them, and I'm going to make sure to keep them on my car. So, it's kind of a pain to put them on properly because there's not really any like alignment marks on these or anything like that. There's kind of some things behind this, but that's about it. But let me go ahead and start drilling some holes and get this thing installed. pretty much entirely done right now the rear bumper I'm kind of leaving uncompleted for now it's just kind of being held in place by friction pretty much because uh, you probably noticed the cuts I did in it are obviously gonna be for a ch chassis mounted wing which I don't have yet unfortunately so once I get that I'll finish up the bumper but for now everything else out of the way I've kind of been saving this as sort of like the cherry on top 
This is brand new OEM badges. too crazy about car badges whenever they're missing but in this case I make a little bit of an uh, exception because I like this one and also from all my time owning this car I noticed a lot of people don't know what it is and they constantly ask me what is that now they can just look at it it for the body of the car at least. I got all the parts on finally and it's looking good. If you stuck around this long, thanks for watching. I know it probably got a little bit boring there towards the end. Not really a whole lot of crazy stuff happening, just kind of tinkering with it here and there, but yeah, I'm pretty, I know I'm, I know I'm not really the best at uh, hyping stuff up for the internet, you know, going all uh, crazy because stuff's done, but this has honestly all been like a pretty surreal experience for me. Like it honestly doesn't feel like this is even my car anymore. It's, especially the fact that I haven't been able to drive it for forever. Like I almost feel like I don't even own an RX-7 sometimes. But yeah, no, this is great. I like this stuff. I can't get enough just looking out my window and just seeing this car in my driveway. But this is going to be the end of this video. And hopefully in the next one, the, the big project will be just sort of getting it back on the road, getting the engine running again. There's not a whole lot to do with that, but like, you know, there's a little bit of fabrication I got to do, a little bit of hoping the ECU still works, because back before I actually stopped driving it, one of the ignition coils kind of melted on me. Turns out with AEM coils, you need to use a lot of dielectric grease, otherwise they tend to short out. Go figure. And I don't think my ECU is generating a, uh, what do you call that, a sensor signal anymore. So I'm not sure if I fried that or not, but that'll, I'll figure that out. Other than that, hopefully, hopefully by the next time I post a video, this thing will be running and driving. Because honestly, I, I've been dying to drive it again, especially the way it looks now. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.